Hello, everybody. Welcome back after a uh, extended break. Uh, due to various reasons and holidays. Hope everybody in the United States had a good Thanksgiving. But welcome to Bears and Dragons, where a bunch of us nerdy ass bears sit around and play Dungeons and Dragons. We play Dungeons and Dragons! Alright, so previously on Bears and Dragons Out of the Abyss. Uh, can anybody remember what happened last time? Uh, we were given a couple quests to help out, um, Lindenstone. Uh, one was a escort mission back to, uh, Greco's dude. And then to find... The other one was to find some... Like... Ancient Grove or something? Something to do with Earth Elementals, like being able to control Earth Elementals. Basically, we're helping um, Blindenstone, uh, the people of Blindenstone, prepare to fight the Lord of Oods. Or the Pudding King and all, and they need some supplies and some uh, reinforcements. So we are helping them out with certain things. Uh, right now we are we're gonna do one of the easier ones we had which is just a escort uh, caravan back to uh, to grackles tube for weapons the assault shipment that they were taking to go trade they've got people for negotiations and everything they just want an escort yeah. simple as that um you've traveled. From Grackelstug to Blingdon Stone via Neverlight Grove. Uh, and so, you know, kind of the normal length of time it takes to get, get there. Uh, we do, you do have a few more guides along the ways because you are escorting a group of people for deep domes in this case. Murph Neblin, I can't pronounce it correctly. We did advise to kind of skirt around Neverlight Grove due to the one demon lord there. Uh, they did comment about that they kind of need the help of Neverlight Grove, or at least uh, maybe they might be able to get some help from at least some of the Myconids, uh, due to the fact that the fungi, one of the fungi, uh, that's available in that area can actually be applied to your weapons to prevent them from being uh, affected by the oozes. Didn't we like talk to them, like tell them about uh, the group of survivors and all? Like they shouldn't go to Neverlight for the the Mykonids because they were kind of like getting mind controlled and all. But that there was a another group of Mykonids out. Outside the Neverlight Grove, that might be able to help us out with so, stool. So, so, here will be the goals. This will be a uh, this will be a skills challenge because you guys are high enough level. I got everybody to level ten. Uh, so. You're high enough level that you can easily take anything that on that would normally come through. So I'm not worried about battle at this point. But skills on uh, successfully navigating and uh, preventing battle, uh, per se, through the Underdark. So what here's here's going to be... Well, what was the actual... From the nope. Night Grove. Oh, actually, it's not too bad. It's only 12, or no, not 20 days. Uh, let's, let's see. Two 10 days. In order to succeed at the skills challenge, you will, in order to 
I mean, basically you'll complete the task, but how well the task is completed. You will need... We'll, do, we'll go ahead and do eight successes before four failures. You see in mind. So, I would like everybody to roll initiative for all party members. They'll be part of this escort mission. Just to get an order of who goes when. I got a two. <laughs> Lasser with a two. Got a sorrow with twenty two. Got Holly with Age got a four. Age is never a very initiative innovative. Oh, I got Sarah on here twice. He's pretty chill. He knows when he's needed. Yeah. Red got. Alright, so, you gather your party, uh, you get together with a couple of wagons full of salt, and you begin your 40-day journey to Gracklestug, uh, aware of your current circumstances. They only expect you to be near enough that they could easily be unmolested on their way into crackle stug uh and it would probably and it might be a day or two before they actually get done with their no negotiations so overall round trip is going to be about probably uh, uh 45 maybe less days um depending on how well their negotiations go in crackle stug for purchasing the weapons that they're looking for Along the way, a couple things could happen, such as the fact your Mykonid friends might be around. Uh, you can uh, get in touch with them and see if they can assist with uh, getting the appropriate materials to help protect the weapons of the Deep Gnomes and your own. Uh, I think most of you have magic weapons, though, right? Yeah. I think we all do. We're at least the fighters did. Uh, Holly doesn't. And since it's not just you, it's going to be uh, a... Well, a militia <laughs> of deep gnomes going in. They want to protect their own... Have their own weapons protected so they don't waste materials on trying to get through their through the uses. The Dwarf Division. So a couple of things that could happen during it. Uh, um, there's also finding signs along the way of where Entamox Boom is. Uh, would help in future endeavors as well. Uh, so just think about these type of goals as well as you know watching out for uh, perspective um, threats uh, to protect the caravan on the way we're not really traveling at a very fast pace here 
So, because you've got a lot of people and uh, a lot of salt in, the, in this shipment. So, Syra, what would you like to yeah. do to help out on the travel for the caravan? Well, I do not do well with survival checks. So, instead... To keep us safe, I could send out an arcane eye ahead of us to keep keep a watch ahead, you know, scout out in front of us. Yeah. Along the way, maybe investigation checks to see tracks, but that might just be survival. No, but that would be more along the survival. Um, oh. I would just say you basically are scouting ahead using your keen eye. Um, I will say go ahead and make a either a perception check or an arcana check. I'll choose the arcane the arcane eye. One success. Uh, as you're traveling along for a, a couple of days, uh, Syra is keeping her arcane eye out on the lookout, maybe probably up a little bit higher from the ground just so it can look down on things um, to ensure the safety of the caravan, um, spotting some potential threats but are easily able to avoid them. Uh, next, Holly. How would Holly like to assist with this journey? How could she use her strength? Her best plus is yeah, strength and athletics check. But I was like, I don't know how to that would help out. The next Clear part some part. paths, maybe? If there's like block paths or Yeah. Or, or blocking other paths that we might have known were dangerous to keep enemies away from us. Like if I saw something with the RK9, you could block off paths. Or clear, or clear paths. Yeah. 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 Keep, yeah. Keep in mind that this, depending on how you're, you're what you're trying to do, you can also think of things just because the standard is. Uh, one skill, we can easily change that to a different ability behind that. You have to convince me, though. Yeah. Otherwise, I would say, like, Her background is entertainer. And she has a decent performance check. So probably just to keep things lively and like keep spirits up, she'll do little acts of, like feats of strength and stuff. Okay. Give me it's probably during some of the downtime to keep everybody's spirits up. Uh go ahead and give me a strength performance check. She's performing feats of So I'm gonna roll it like an athletics check, but it's the same plus. Okay. Because she's perfor proficient in performance. So it's just easier to do it this way. Mm -hmm. Oh wow, she wow. 
she, no. It's been a while since she's done stuff of this, so she's just out of practice. Ollie. She did a performance check and got a uh, nat one. Oh. Poor Holly. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so... Wait a sec, wait a sec. Wait, oh, never mind. Never mind. Mm -hmm. I was been playing tricks on me. Mm -hmm. He was just like, she gets real rolls on that ones. Oh, does she? I'm like, does she? He's like, no. No, she doesn't. <laughs> just a... She's better than that, so she gets re rolls. <laughs> Sounds like if she had the lucky feet, she could. <laughs> I know, I was like, wait, does she have something? Like, let me look. No. He's like, no, I am joking. Like, where did that come from? Same. Ah, Josh. You weren't the one rolling it, so... But anyways. You suddenly became a, a hobbit, or what do you call it? <laughs> so, she... During during some of that downtime, she's trying to impress some of the, the gnomes with, her, with various feats of strength. Uh, but... None of them are really getting very engaged. I'm doesn't really help. I'd be a failure. Karad! I wonder how Karad's going to help out with this journey. Oh, he's going to do what he does best. Excuse me. Cook. He is going, like, each night, like, every during each meal and stuff, he's going to prepare, like, fantastic meals. Alright. Give me a charisma cooking utensils check. That's it. Okay, so... Thirteen? Thirteen. Uh, but... Mm -hmm. I'm going to... Well... Does that fail? Yes. Okay. So, I'm going to use Magical Guidance to re-roll that d20. Alright. It's like, I actually have something. So, I'm going to spend a... Sorcery point. This. Oh, no. Yay! Sixteen. Oh, this is <laughs> it's like, it's... success. Uh, I won't say this is a rousing success, but uh, you can definitely see that you've gotten a quite. Uh, people are excited for your meals. It's not like a, a an absolute thrill, but it's like, oh, crabs cooking. Uh, this is going to be it's not as best, but it's not as worse. Right, it's good. People really enjoy the cooking that you that you have on this journey. All right, let's see if we gauge it. So Gage is going to uh, actually help out with the scouting as well. But in addition, he's going to use his echoes to assist with the scouting. I'm not sure if that's exactly how echoes are supposed to work, but... Uh, it is now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go with it. Uh, and he's going... And because it's basically he's looking... And the echo is looking, giving the advantage. <laughs> well, it was good that he had the advantage since one of them was one, but bad uh, uh, because he didn't. So sadly, uh, despite looking around, uh, sometimes he loses 
the range on his uh, uh, echo and it disappears and it ends up not being as much of a help. Lassiter, how are you going to help along this journey? No. Uh, could I... <clears throat> Could I help with the morale support? How are, how are you going to do that? Excuse me. Uh, I don't have like lighthearted conversation. Uh, held jokes. I don't know. Ask people about their families back home. <laughs> and what skill do you think best works with this? Oh, shoot. This is skill. Not, uh, I was hoping I'd just do a straight charisma. Um. Frick. Well, look at your proficiencies. Have something related to that. Have a like a proficiency yeah. that might go along with that line. Oh no! I have intimidation. Sorry <laughs> <laughs> about your family. <laughs> you will have a good time. I will find you. I will kill you. <laughs> I mean, suppose. Persuasion would help. No, that's stupid. Um, Actually, I think want that would talk? work great. You know, oh, talking okay. with them, you know, giving maybe persuading them to talk, which might help lift their spirits. Maybe some of them cry of a cathartic nature, and they go, "Thank you, thank you," that sort of thing. So, I would definitely say persuasion <laughs> it works just fine for this. The seventeen, we have a success. Uh, a therapist Lassiter's uh, office is open. And in mingling with the deep gnomes, and uh, uh, he is able to uh, make sure that their spirits stay bright as they travel through this dangerous, dark, dreary place. I, I give a few of them partings for their sins. As three successes and yeah. failures. Uh, we're getting along pretty well uh, at this point in time. We're, we're getting actually close to Crackle Sug. Uh, getting to the point where, we're, where we would end up starting to break off uh, into where you guys are, are going to like hang out for a while outside of the earshot or scouting of the Rackle Stug uh, militia or whatever their police forces. Uh, but there's one more day before they do that. And Syra, what do you do to help at least secure the area before the deep gnomes head in for their negotiation? It's secure the area, let's see. Uh, 10 minutes, I'm going to do much. Uh, proficiencies. Well, t taking the inspiration from Gage, separating his, his uh, vision to help keep track. Um, this time, she'll, help, she'll have Sova scout out along alongside her. Uh, I guess trying to do some perceptions. Uh, I will definitely allow that for... I. You'll have two perception rolls, one for yourself and one for Sova. Okay. Pop her out. Alright, so this is Thyra's. Uh-oh. -uh. And here is... So, uh, it is based no. off of sight, so if Sova has any 
anything like rolling with advantage or something due to sight? Uh, she does. The owl has advantage on perception checks with hearing and sight. I definitely go ahead and use that advantage. Alright, perception. 17. 17, excellent. That is a success. Uh, well, you helped. Uh, Soga did, did spot a few things that might be coming. You're able to easily avoid them or take care of them. And to keep danger away from, from the campsite. Now, while they are, uh, have arranged to not have you come into the city. You can go into the city, or at least attempt to. Uh, so, Holly, are you going to stick around out here, or uh, while they go in for the negotiations, what are you going to do to keep the the site secure while they're make, having their negotiations? Um... Plus, you don't know what's going on in Grackle Stoog since you left, so... Uh, it's been a while. Yeah, at this point, I'm Kinda, uh, she's gonna, like... I, think, I feel like Holly would follow the, the caravan in and kinda act as a bodyguard. To this big, beefy, like, water genasi type person. Huge battle axe. It'd be very intimidating. All right, give me a strength uh, intimidation check. Fifteen is a success. Uh, Holly follow follows them in, and um, they find actually. Rackle Stug is not in the great shape. Uh, the guards and the guards actually seem to be visible, strangely enough. Uh, while they usually have a visible presence, there's a lot more guards that are visible because they frequently go invisible. And they bit, they are wandering around, but when they see the big salt shipment coming in, they do get excited for 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 the uh, shipment that's coming in. Um, they needed to replenish some of their stores due to what she finds out to be a problem with the dragon. Uh. Does Holly do anything while she's in town? Good question. Mm. I feel like she would just stick with the caravan, kind of not wander off too much and stuff because don't know who to run into and whatnot. That could be bad for them. She successfully intimidates anybody from from Sorry, approaching the caravan when not invited. Yeah. Because of course they, people have to interact with them. So. Karad! It's just outside of Rackles, Duke. Turn invisible. Pretty much just gonna, like, hide as off as much as possible. Um, during the time, just because there's probably gonna be traffic and stuff, and don't want to get noticed. And kind of just... So... Because he fears the worst for him. Right. Go ahead and uh, roll me a stealth check. Uh, we're definitely going to re-roll that. <laughs> yeah, it might be a good idea. 
Well, roll 20 is cursed for you today. 21. 21. Uh, due to his ability to turn himself invisible, uh, he is able to successfully stay hidden uh, during the transaction. Does he actually go in and stealth in or to, to find out what had happened? Or um, No, but he's going to listen in to the traffic that's going to like kind of stay hidden, but guessing we're near a like a traffic area where caravans, people going in and out and stuff. Uh, he's gonna listen to bits of conversation as people pass and stuff to get a good idea of what is gonna what's happening in there. Uh, as a bonus, uh, go ahead and give me a perception check with advantage. Those are your ability to stay hidden. Um, you can get close enough to hear more conversation. Is that a success? That is a success. Okay. So I can do this like 10 times. <laughs> so, Parad, <laughs> what exactly are you listening for? Or is it just whatever comes? Any information whatsoever. What's happened to Thumber Chart? Um, state of the city? Um, state of the uh, Keepers of the Flame. Like pretty much, like those are the ones he's really going to listen to. But he will want he'll listen he'll listen for any information. Uh, you do hear some conversation about because uh, oh. there's on this traffic route. You do get some some uh, hear some talk about a, a dead dragon. Um, that has actually been used to help uh, boost the food stores. Uh, but also that apparently one of the factions inside the city has been completely destroyed. Uh, can't make out which faction was, but yeah. there was a complete decimation of what of the faction Gage is actually gonna go with Holly well to, to help guard the caravan kind of trying to stay unassuming and Stay unassuming. And he will also listen for news if you can get any more information and he does so uh while holly's being there grandstanding with her her strength uh gage actually go goes into town kind of just as kind of the silent guard uh, staying very unassuming for everything, so he's not necessarily stealthing specifically, but not being very ob obvious, and he's listening to things that are going around and actually looking around. There's smoke coming from uh, the area close to Thumberchod's former lair. Uh, and uh, he does hear rumors that the uh, Keepers of the Flame have been completely decimated. Every member of the Keepers have been killed by the dragon himself. Uh, he does hear rumors that they are having some issues in regards to their forging efforts due to the fact they have lack a red dragon to keep their, their forges afire.
Lassiter. I would say uh, this would be the final round for them get gathering the weapons that they can. So they'll be heading out soon. You guys, I'm useless. <laughs> um, I don't know. Uh, we have two failures and six successes. And I, like, I don't know, go around and make sure uh, everyone's feeling okay. I don't know where. Maybe someone fell down at some point and got a bad boo boo or something. Oh, checking everybody's physical well being. Yeah. Okay. Or just give, keep guard. Give me a medicine check. That's... That twenty. There we go. Uh, there have been uh, a couple of issues. Uh, some people have eaten the wrong mushrooms. Uh, however, because of your familiarity with the mushrooms that they did wrong, you are able to successfully treat them and make sure that everybody is still healthy. You're fine. Just take a nap. You'll feel better when we wake up. Cool. That's a success. All right, time for the return trip. Uh, having entered the city with a uh, load of salt, they now lead with a load of uh, Dwarven forged, or, or specifically Duergard forged weapons. And they are heading back to Blindenstone. Thyra, how do you help with the return journey? Uh, let's see. What else can I help out with? If you want to understand. Um, I guess while we were in Grecklestug, could I have investigated leads as to... Because this whole ordeal started with being captured... So, I guess checking on the Dark Elves, seeing what they've been up to lately, if they've taken advantage of Grecklestug's kind of falling out of order. Basically, listening in on rumors and things like that. So, from, from, from that information, just kind of knowing which tunnels to avoid and what, which ones were safe. Give me an investigation check. Seventeen. Seventeen. Uh, you do find out that uh, soon after you guys ran off towards Netherwellite Grove, uh, a group of drow had come to the city uh, searching for your group. Uh, stating something about them being slaves. Um, they had reported the direction that oh. you had gone, but they were never heard from again. Good. That aren't probably. All right, so I guess just kind of just helping with the navigation then, just, you know. Uh, and with that, we have hit the eight successes, uh, so you have succeeded. Uh, is there anything you would like to do on your return journey? No skill checks or anything. Anything you would like to attempt to accomplish, if anything? Um... Hmm. I guess he wouldn't have had time to researching anything in Grekelstug, especially if everyone else is trying to be more 
stealthy and out of the way. We wouldn't want to draw attention to ourselves because we didn't leave on the best terms. Uh, you pretty much uh, kept towards one cor- uh, the more immediate area to the entrance to uh, Gracklestug and in the uh, This is what happens when things have been a while. In the dark district. Uh, the um, merchants that you were escorting uh, had done basically all the work for acquiring the weapons. So you didn't really have to do much more. Um, but uh, that's pretty much all there was. Again, the drow... Uh, group, uh, band did exit basically the same way you came in just now. This is actually the same way you left. But the city is kind of in shambles right now, so they were kind of distracted about them for most of the, for most of the time. Even though it's been over a month since you were last here. Okay. Oh, I think we've been choosing for a while. Anybody else want to do anything? Karad, uh, uh, Gage does, uh, uh, tell you about the Keepers. What happened at Thumbertron? Uh, she will... Knowing that information, he would just... Stay quiet most of the time. Trying to sort out how he feels about this, because even though like they, it there was his family, but kind of didn't treat him as much, but they still were. So it's just weird family drama. So you're trying to sort out his feelings. Still doing the normal cooking and everything, but not can do much else. Uh, one of the uh, deep dome negotiators um, uh, comes up to you, Karad, and it, it just soon after you left and uh, says, uh, I don't know how they knew, but um, somebody told me to give you this note. And he hands you an envelope. At night, I uh, will read it. Like when we go to bed. Before we get to that last is there anything you'd like to do? Um, I want to ask Grant <clears throat> if, uh... To rearrange his insides. <laughs> I'd like to ask him, um, if his plans remain the same. Once we get topside, you go back to um, his clan. Yeah, and take you with him. Uh huh. He says, "I didn't change anything. Take you much longer than I wanted to. Want to get out of here sooner, but I don't know how to get out of here. You? Not yet. The only way I know is with these people." Well, hopefully it's almost over. Yep. Okay. Uh, that night, uh, as you're all getting ready to bed down, watches have been set. And get bedded down. Lasseter. Okay. Um, Karad, you open the, the note, uh, and... It's written in Draconic. And it seems to give... It's it's very vague on what it's saying. I don't have the exact note. I can't think of the exact note because I thought of this. Um, But it seems to be indicating that there's something for you to have. 
somewhere near Never Light Grove. And there's a map that's included. Well, it's all Looking at the map, can I determine if, like, it's on our route or, like, not too far off our route? It's it's not too far. Uh, the Some of the, uh, if you mention this to some of the deep gnomes, they were like, ooh, it might give us an opportunity to stop by, by and see here, there, and maybe even sneak in and get... Uh, get some of those mushrooms if we get close enough. Take it a little detour. He would, he would ask if they would be able to do that. Um, and I know the next morning he will, because he's wor he's been with clerics and stuff and knows some of the stuff that he can do. They can do. He would reluctantly go to Lassiter. And ask him if he has the ability oh, to do the sending spell. He knows clerics can do that. Like... You're muted, Lassner. Sorry, um, I know of the spell. I don't have it prepared at the moment. Um, well, we have plenty of days to do it. Uh, oh, yeah. So to get to where we're probably going. So I am going to say that you should try to contact Stool and have Ooh. him meet us. At, and I'll show him the map and stuff. Like at a the specific point, not too far from the Neverlight Grove, and where the map is showing us to go, like kind of on our route. Um, try to see if he can meet us there when we would be arriving. And who is this stool you speak of? Mackie upside the head. <laughs> okay. You remember now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He. He. He's. He's. Definitely familiar. Okay. Um, so whenever you get, morning. yeah, whenever you get a chance to send him do the sending spell, please contact him and see if him and his group can help us out. Okay. Um, I was just reading the spell. I've never used it before. Um. Basically, as per spell cast, you have twenty-five words to message the person. Doesn't matter how far away they are. That's but you only okay. can use twenty-five words Long per cast. Yeah. So you want me to get in touch with Stool, tell him to meet us where? I'll point to a place on the map where we, like, general area where we're going, like, it's going to be on our path. We're going by the Neverlight Grove. They can help us out. Yeah, so how do I verbally tell someone mentally that we want to meet at a specific spot? You could probably describe the location. The map actually seems very clear that, like, the different where Neverlight Grove is. And you can use multiple locations. path things. Mm -hmm. I have a feeling we aren't going to need most of the spell slots. So. Okay. I, I'm bad at these things, so yeah. bear with me. Um, so. I'll think of Stool, tell him, <clears throat> Hey, Stool, meet us. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey, Stool, it's Lassiter. 
meet us. Uh, shit. <laughs> meet us near Neverlight Grove. I, I don't know. That's all I. That's all I got. Uh, I, I will say in the remaining 10, 10 words, you can give a relatively accurate description of the area. And time frame. Oh. To be there in like X days. Uh, so I'll add that part, but if I need to send in another. A okay. Basically, if you need to use a second right. casting, you will. Yeah. You got plenty of spells left. And plus, nothing's really happening. Yeah. Yeah, it's just like, I can burn through sorcery points to make these uh, <laughs> these ability checks work, so. Um, can they reply back? Yes. Um, uh... Uh, you get back, back. Ah, sinner! Oh my god. Uh, we we didn't want to get close to Never Like Grove, but we're willing to meet you. Um, why why do you need to meet up? Um, uh, Sovereign Basidia is asking. Um, who? <laughs> um, their leader. Uh, Brad wants to meet there. I don't know. Don't ask me such questions. I mean, you could ask Karad before you do another sending spell. <laughs> I'm counting that as it's or, or are you? Or are you? Spell. Is that what you're sending? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you get a reply. Well, why don't you ask Karad? And. You Would you ask for us to do this? I'm keeping track. Don't worry. <laughs> um, Karad, uh, what is it that uh, you need? Well, they'd probably be able to help us best find those mushrooms. There's fungus that we need to help protect the weapons. If they're yes, they're great place at Neverlight Grove. But stool and them might have information to be that could point us away from Neverlight to go to. So, help find fungus. We need help finding a particular kind of fungus. Oh, um, P.S. This is my last uh, sending spell. Beep. <laughs> All right, Jester. What? <laughs> Nothing. Never mind. <laughs> At the town, please leave a message. Uh, you get a response back saying, "Oh, fungi. Oh, yeah. We can help you out with that. You can uh, find us in the." It, in our new grove. It's actually pretty close to Blingdenstone. We saw this way marker thing, and... Yeah, it, it sounded like it was getting to that. Okay, I, so... I wasn't counting the words, but I'm just assuming I hit 25 before she, he could actually finish his sentence. Um, <clears throat> so, Stool said they have a new grove. He said it's near... Did he say... Blindenstone or Grackles, dude? Blindenstone. Okay, yeah. He's, uh, There's it's a way near marker there. nearby. There's a way marker nearby. That's all I got, I think. I'm not very good with messages, by the way. Okay. So we'll... I'll relay that to like whoever is running the caravan that let's like we'll like stop i like to stop at this place 
but it'd be better for us not to go into Neverlight Grove, but to go to our friends, our Mike and Ed friends outside Blendenstone for help. I figured within a day or so, like, getting close, like, relatively close to, like, I would say half a tent, like, five days out from Blendenstone, we could send another sending and be like, alright, exactly where are you? Alright, give, uh, cool. give, give me a persuasion check. I will say it's not terribly difficult. Uh, the caravan leader is like, oh, huh, we might be able to do that, especially if we can provide it, if they can provide a source of uh, the fungi we need, because that is something we have. And you're saying that Neverlight Grove is pretty dangerous? Yes. Yeah, I never knew that it was so dangerous. It's a it's, it's a, a relative, it's it's a relatively new development. Huh. Oh. Like last okay, well, month or we so. We need to do detour, but we'll have to be. Pretty cautious, just in case there's any of the Mykonids are out uh, scouting, and they have like super thing. Uh, but it, I don't know how they all work. But sure, we can, we can stop by there. Uh, let me see that map. I'll hand it over. Takes a look at the map. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. If we go through here, we can definitely avoid being too close and we can get there without being noticed yeah yeah we can take care of this no this should be this a couple days detour uh, sadly but um uh, it should be fine uh, our negotiations actually went faster than expected so yeah we'll, we'll be good to go also with oh. the note do i recognize the handwriting Yes. Um, well, not really. You've never really seen the handwriting, but something tells you this might have been written by Emberjohn. That's not a feeling, but I was just like, I need, I need DM to say it. <laughs> so yeah, he'll definitely it's, be it's one too. Because it's weird because you know his claws are quite large. Um, so how he accomplishes at least you're not sure but uh the, the writing looks to be about this like as if a dwarf wrote it but um there's just something about it that seems to be it says thunder i feel like it's then a thunder jod for some reason um then chunk if we if we want i I have the water walk spell. Um, Why would we need that? Uh, because the dark lake is farther away from ne Neverlight Grove. We could go through the water on top of it, and we'd be farther away. But we need to go somewhat near it, plus. I mean, that you, only... you have to go around because the entire caravan it is like a couple of wagons, which are yeah, like of weapons. Water yeah, walk doesn't would... really work on those wagons. Okay. Yeah, I was like thinking that we could. And yeah, yeah, you have more than there's more than ten people on the caravan too. Okay. Yeah. But you're trying to get close to Neverlight, which is still circling around the Dark Lake, what lake you did on the journey to Grackle's Studio. So a few days later, the caravan leader pulls off the, the original uh, track, uh, finds a, a nice uh, spot nearby to kind of circle the wagons. Says, uh, you know what? We're going to just keep the wagons here. We're going to have some guards around here. Um, if some of you can stay behind, I can lead you to where this map was showing. Um, it's only in like a day's journey uh, back. Uh, I just don't want to take the carts. It would probably be easier if we just went on foot. Yeah. 
Uh, uh, Rant and I can stay and. Gage will, will stay behind. I don't know about Holly. Oh, uh, should um, we leave the non-players? And... Crad will look to Syrah and see if she will come with him. Yeah, I'll go with you. Like, Syrah is the only one he's going to ask. So, Crad, Syrah... And uh, the caravan leader, we'll call him Schmitty. Schmitty! Um, uh, Schmitty uh, leads you uh, through some some caverns. And uh, about half a day's journey uh, through this trip, uh, you come across a uh, cave uh, which has a which looks like a slight red glow coming from inside. Um, oh. This is the place to green the map. Thank you for bringing us here. I, I think it's best to um, stay here. I figured. Um... And I'm going, just because I'm hesitant on it, at third level, like, I want to place a hand on Syra and at third level cast invisibility. So each of us, both of us will go invisible. Okay. You are both now invisible. And kind of just be like, all right, let's go. And I'm going to like keep a hand on Syra just so we both know where each other are at th during this time. Are you, are you trying? We're trying to sneak in quietly, correct? Yeah, it's just, it's one of those that's like, yeah, someone sent me this, and I, I believe it's them, but ch uh, Chad, but paranoia. <laughs> Has he ever sent information like this before, like with other people? Not to my knowledge. That's why it's like, Given. I want it to be something like, like, it's hopeful and all, but paranoid. <laughs> I think it's odd, given how Grekelstug was when we left it the first time. I mean, the fact that he could be still around would be amazing. Yeah. Let's just let, let's just go in and see. All right, I would like you both to give me stealth checks with advantage. I am definitely gonna re-roll that. So fifteen. Fifteen. Uh, so you both slowly approach, uh, Crad, you actually do, uh, uh, stub your toe on a, on a, on a rock or something, um, and practically fall over, but you catch yourself. Uh, there is a little bit of sound, but it's still pretty quiet. You don't suspect anybody besides you and Syra might have heard it. Uh, you enter into the cavern and, uh, the cave and you see a large cavern uh, with a pool of water and some of the water dripping from the slag tops so, uh, in the center of the pool in this cave is 
uh, something which looks to be covered by um, the moss or something. Just underneath it, you see this soft red glow. I'm going to drop like the concentration on myself only, uh, the visibility on me, leaving it on Syrah, kind of as just a backup in case something happens. I won't know she's there. So, so kind of put herself up against the wall just to have something behind her so she's not snuck up on just in case. And then I am. I'm going to go up to it and then remove the covering thinking he like kind of like he has an idea what it might be but he's, he's gonna uh, clearing the moss uh, you find what looks to be <laughs> <Good job. laughs> what I have looks... it It's a lucky guy. Uh, you see a uh, uh, a red ovoid stone. Uh, it looks moves, but it's giving off this soft red glow. Kneel down and gently. Pick up the stone. Uh, this is like a big. Oh. oh, okay. So I was my because my, maybe like it's like. Uh, I'll yes. yeah like guess so I'm guessing I won't be able to pick it up, but um. I'll kind of just like run my hands over it. Uh, as you are. Uh, rubbing your hand over it, uh, you hear a cracking sound. And as as it starts cracking, it starts breaking apart. And this is not like any dragon egg you might have seen, but you, you probably had the idea. Dragon egg? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and out pokes uh, the snout of some sort of dragon kin. This is not a dragon, but it is red scaled and uh, has in and kind of looks through, looks up at you and then kind of like moves its head. Its eyes kind of like narrow, just kind of like waking up, kind of crawls out. It's about three feet in length. Length and starts sniffing you and then just kind of gently rubs its scaled head against against you this oh. is a drake oh. kind of just he's just mesmerized and stunned about what's of of everything he's seeing. And just like kinda like kneels down and just like grasps onto the Drake and starts crying a little bit. Kinda of nuzzles into your grasp. Ira, you're watching this entire scene. I was gonna say, as she's kind of figuring out what's going on, she'll kind of step forward from her, from the wall she was up against and put her hand on her shoulder and just. Could he have been reborn? It's. I, I don't know, but. It... It's not a dragon. It's a drake. 
I, I've never heard of dragons being reborn into dragon kin before. The, I mean, other than the obvious coloring, does the drake have any kind of physical features that resemble Thumbershod? Uh, not really directly. I mean, it was just born, so who knows what might happen if he's if he starts <laughs> as he grows. Again, he was just born. <laughs> I can't really tell. Yeah, don't don't have your yeah. Look, don't let the camera see you because of that. I know what. You, no, <laughs> they the pe the keepers of the flame made him that way. They, he wasn't born Tonky. I don't know. Maybe this Drake has a has a big appetite. You know, he's just born. He might have a big appetite, but he's not a chonky boy yet. So, Crad, quick, quick! I want you to do me one quick favor. Uh, give me an insight check. Does that pass? Uh, no, sadly not. You're too little into this, like. Uh, Bunch of them. Nope. <laughs> nope. Nope. <laughs> just in, in a, just in an emotional state. Um, you're not picking up anything extra. Uh, I call you. <laughs> oh, oh. Does it um, speak at all, or just just basically nuzzling? Well, it's giving, just giving some just born baby noises uh, okay. for whatever is the scaly, scaly dragon or drake be like. Walks on four legs. Doesn't seem to have any hint of wings or anything. Definitely still a land creature. It's called the Ember. Sorry, there was all of a sudden like some stuck in my throat. I'm like, oh my. Oh yeah. And then he's gonna um lose three feet. He is a little slimy right now. Um just so Sarah doesn't scare him, or, or it, rather, who knows. Um, she'll kind of step back and kind of quietly ask to for him to drop the invisibility, just so I'm not, like, appearing right in front of him and scaring him. Yeah. You could just slightly jab him, and he'd be... Well, if Lasseter were here, he would, throw, he would throw rocks at him. But... Um, uh, gonna start using um, a new spell, Cantrip he just picked up, press the digitation, and start cleaning off the drake. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what I was gonna do, is just like, kind of start doing that. You do, you do also realize you're in a pool of water. No, he doesn't, He he's not thinking about that right now, obviously. <laughs> Look at his insight. <laughs> uh, he d <laughs> Ember does does start squirming a bit as he, he sees something that he that he wants to check out. Do you, do you let him go? I, I, I look towards where he's looking. He, he's looking at the water. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and he goes goes up to the water, just kind of like sniffs it and. Starts, starts uh, uh, dr drinking, and then he he actually like goes into the water, oh. and and just kind of goes under for a moment, and he still under, and you do see him kind of like swimming under the water. Just it, it's shallow enough that that he's like 
like just above that he can like, like touch his feet to the ground and like he's just a little depth. Like uh, it's like here. Yeah. On him. Like that. that and uh, uh, he's he's under for for uh, quite a while. It doesn't seem to be in any distress. I go down and like I'm getting distressed. <laughs> So I'll go to him and kind of just like bring him out of like bring him up to the surface. Yep. Uh, you do feel the water that's around him is warm. You don't think it's necessarily like warm, but no, it's just <laughs> bo bodily heat of a mm -hmm. red drake. Mm -hmm. Warm, yeah. And, and he he just kind of like gives a a, a delightful <laughs> gives you a lick. He's got this big, thick tongue that he wipes you with. Mm. Uh, All right, it's 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 time to go. Let, let's and he'll start talking to him in draconic and just like kind of telling him like, "Hey, let, let, let's go." Ignore that. Uh, as you uh, start heading out, he he like climbs up and he's just like doing this kind of like waddle behind you. He's not moving very quickly. His his legs aren't necessarily that strong yet. Yeah, no, I, I'm not like I'm just like walking very casually and keeping my eyes on him. And start headed back to the caravan. Uh, Schmitty, uh, when he says, whoa, whoa, wait, what's that? A gift from an old friend. Uh, is he tame? Yes, uh, to a point. He'll be fine. Okay. This is weird. Uh, all right. Just... Uh, Trust us, he's, he kind of he's, keeps, he's his, keeps his distance. <laughs> <laughs> Understandable. And, and, you know, stays on the opposite side of you and Syrah <laughs> from the Drake. The Drake doesn't pay mind. It just, it, eventually, as you're walking, and he, he kind of like stumbles a little, and sometimes he's rocky, a little rocky terrain. It's just very awkward. Uh, Newborn. As you slowly slowly uh get to the caravan it it ends up being pretty late um so overall it would have taken the equivalent of almost like a full day's journey between the two two places um uh but uh he sees sees the sees the people and just starts getting all curious just like a brand new puppy dog and he'll start, Eldritch Blast. like, kind of slowly training Ember and um, kind of watching him and making sure he behaves now. Um, give me a... No, actually. I think I have these magical guidance. Because if it's going to be a lot of animal handling checks, I'll be using them. I was the All right, so... You could ask for some help. I would give you, like, some, like I could give you a help action. Uh, like, kind of help, help feed them or something. Yeah. Uh, I, I, first off, we'll, we'll, we'll say, how does the rest of the caravan actually react to suddenly this drake being around lassiter you mumbled eldritch blast you actually eldritch blast <laughs> <laughs> or no what's your reaction to them walking in with this red bipedal lizard creature um, or, I'm, or not I'm bipedal a, uh, quadrupedal i'm at alert um I am definitely ready 
to shoot an Elders Blast if need be, but if it's walking with Karad and Syra, then it should be fine. If you would, she would help assure people along with Karad that he's completely harmless. He's he's a, a friend of ours. Uh, uh, Karad and Syra both both give me a persuasion check. Oh, okay. Persuasion. Thirty twenty. Nice. Uh, persuasion. Okay. Just five. Um, because of the way that Karad uh, can easily interact with uh, Ember, because uh, Ember's basically imprinted on Karad. Um, uh, and uh, with uh, people asking him questions, the entire uh, caravan actually becomes enthralled and, and uh, basically Ember turns into baby, if you know what I mean by that. Mm-hmm. He's, he's the new stool uh, for all the NPCs. Uh, well, Ron's not terribly fond of it, but like whatever. <laughs> I'm not playing with it. Well, don't be jealous just because he's a little bigger than you. I mean, it's only he he's actually quite small. <laughs> don't be jealous because he's cuter than you. <laughs> oh, he says, well, he's not cuter than me. <laughs> Of being being glorious. Yes, yes, we all know. Actually, I've been, I've been meaning to talk to you about that. You do have a certain beauty to you when you when you rage in the battle. I mean, it's it's somewhat unique. You know, I mean, not many of us can do what you do. No, oh, of course. Because I'm the best. Well, that's between you and Ron, but I do say that you you swing your Slips you swing your blade. It turns my back. It turns her back to, towards you. Here I am trying to be nice. Pull her hair. I'm trying oh, to. I'm oh. trying to bury the axe. <laughs> At least you, you try. The axe, this axe in your head. Oh my! <laughs> you can throw. Oh, you can uh, throw. <laughs> this dramatic rivalries. I don't know. I'm not even sure if I'm playing Holly right. Yeah. At this point, every way is the right way. <laughs> uh, you, you make your way uh, back to uh, Blingdenstone. Uh, uh, Karad and Syra, you wanted to, to help train up Ember a bit, right? Along yeah. the way? Well, I was uh, going to basically give Karad like, the help action. Just kind of like yeah, when she you... when he's trying to train, I would kind of feed, help feed him. Or... Yeah, because my it, animal handling is based off my wisdom for, as of right now, and that's my dump stat, so... Yeah. So... It... Yeah, basically, I'm giving the help action. I would like. Can can me and Ron uh, watch? You can watch. It's not going to affect anything. Um, <laughs> I don't want to do this. Just each other. Well, I think Crad would probably be interested in finding out what Ember likes to eat. Oh yeah, he's going to make sure he's fed well. He's gonna try things that he knew Thunder Child liked. So.
Yeah, I'll do that. All right. I want you to make me... All right, you're, so the, what you're actually making me is the is a charisma animal handling check. Okay. With advantage, because I'm because I'm, cause I'm trying to help them train them. Yeah, I want you to do. Okay, so let's do five of them in total, but I'll give you this: uh, charisma animal handling. Or, uh, the charisma cooking utensils. We'll do charisma cooking because then that that gives me that gives me the best possible because I'll be a plus nine. Yeah. Since I'm proficient with cooking, cooking utensils. utensils. Basically, handle him. With your ability to find the right food. So, are we talking about Ember, or are we talking about me? Because I can relate to this. <laughs> the way so. into a man's heart is through his stomach. <laughs> One and each one of these, we're gonna just yeah. So I right. remember it was with advantage, advantage too. Right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So here's number one. Okay, twenty-four. Nice. So okay. two G twenty. What is the thing for? Advantage. So uh, keep. Cage one. Plus. Or keep highest five. one. So. Two. Three. Three. Four, five. I feel like so, with all those, we should be able to very well nail down what the, he likes to eat. Okay, you very quickly learn exactly what he likes to eat. Uh, and you also do a search kind of things on, on things, various things. So it's not the same thing. Yeah. I have a, you, you have a meeting Just one exactly thing. thing all the time. Uh, he, you do find that he does like a lot of things, but there are a few things he's not so fond of. Uh, by the time you get, uh, uh, to back to Blindenstone, the term eating out of, you have him eating out of the palm of your hand is quite true. <laughs> uh, he is probably one of the most tame beasts you've ever met. Um, and, uh, because <laughs> everything was over 20, uh, he does have the ability to do a Dragonborn equivalent of a breath weapon. <laughs> what does he do? He has a, he uh, has a fire breath. Yeah, oh, okay. A, a 50 foot it? cone fire breath of, uh, whatever uh, level one Dragonborn <laughs> can do. Because of how well we did. Nice. Uh, you do do one of the things that helped trigger it was some of the very spicy foods that you ate them. Which, by the way, a lot of the foods that you really liked were oh, the, the spicy. ones that were spicy. <laughs> he heat. likes the heat. Go oh, fig. <laughs> Drake after daddy's heart. Um, so once we get close to Blend and Stone, uh, we would be contacting Stool. The master just rolls his eyes. 
Is it safe to say that we have had long rests? Days were. Oh, you've had you, you've had several days of long rests. <laughs> Good to know. Okay, so uh, no, no, not not an issue in this session. Um, what am I telling Stool? Uh, figuring out uh, giving us directions to his growth. Uh. Hey, Stool, it's me again. We are awaiting directions. Um, we are close to Blindenstone? Yeah, Blindenstone. I see. Right? Yeah, Blindenstone. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you get a get a response back. Oh, we set up about two days due east of Lindenstone, and uh, you won't believe what this place is like. It's there. There, we did find this strange way marker, which uh, is actually about uh, really close to our growth. We'll have somebody waiting. Uh, that's it. Um, um, um. So uh, stool is not really good with the twenty five words thing. <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> um although I'm not counting, so <laughs> I just uh, like cutting things off because it's more dramatic. They want us to um go due east from Blindstone. <laughs> oh. Uh and I guess I last year would be able to give us the proper wording of what Stool said, even though Spud can't. I'm hoping that Lasso would be able to. Um. And right. I assume that they'll have uh, someone waiting for us. Lasso, uh, roll me a history check. See, see, <laughs> see if you can effectively communicate what Stool said. This is gonna be bad. Ooh, this is a good time to test this. Oh, you said history. Mm. Thanks. Cool. Uh, something about due east? About as bad as you. Okay. Cast a spell yourself next time. Just kidding. <laughs> I don't know what you want from me. Uh, side note: Did did you ever resummon a uh, uh, Borkhead? I saw I did, but I'm not sure I, anymore. I, I was li I, I forgot to listen to the last episode <laughs> to remember. Yeah, exactly. He went through a little bit of. Like he had killed him by accident. And he, yeah, he, he did resummon him. Okay. I, I, I was just wondering because you could be under the, this like constant hangover feeling that you're getting from. <laughs> no, I, I remember he did it at some point because there was a whole thing about me teaching him how to do it, and he knew how to do it. All right, uh, uh, Dorbo Diggermatics uh, hey, hey, comes to, uh, expecting the caravan and says, Hey, thank you guys for, for helping out with this. Uh, oh, what's, uh, what's that? Oh, uh, Schmidt, stop size. Oh, that's Ember. He's, he's really nice. Uh, uh, he, he, all the kids will, will just absolutely love him. Uh, uh, apparently he likes spicy foods. Uh, he's Krads. Uh, pet? I don't know what you would call him. Son. Son. Son? Just roll with it. Schmitty just kind of shrugs. And Dorbo's like, okay. Uh, yeah. Um, so, uh, thank you for this. Um, oh. Did did you by any chance run into your uh, Mykonid friends at all on the way? You, Not you, yet. You could use those one guy. Uh, we're meeting them. Somewhere. Oh, Dewey. really? Uh, where? 
somewhere, dude. He's... Oh, hey, you know, that was the last known known, known location of uh, uh, Entomox Boon. Is somewhere right around there. Uh, apparently, there's supposed to be some sort of way markers or something that would would help lead the way. Um, if you do run into those, hey, uh, another thing that will be a boon to us are uh, Geomancers. Uh, would love to have it so that we can summon some Earth Elementals. Will be great in helping retake the uh, uh, the district. <laughs> okay. Geomancers. Oh, got it. That's why. So if you do find it, let us know. That that will be a an extreme help. Also with those fungi to help out with weapons, uh, just huge boon. Uh, we've been waiting for a long time. We've had some um, ooze incursions, but fortunately, it really hasn't been anything major uh, yet. Uh, a little concerned because it's been a little more frequent than usual. Because there was a couple that that usually would come through on occasion, but. Now it seems to be at least once or twice a day, and uh, we do need to try to uh, get ready and actually go in and take care of this. Have have there been any weird visions lately? Uh, no visions that we've we've any at least I've been reported as far as I'm aware of. Um, I do check in with uh, all of our chiefs. Uh, chief of medicine, um, the chief of the the militia, the and 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 everything. So it, everything seems to be in order. So uh, besides the the occasional incursion, it's not doing really great on on our current weapons. But hey, with this stock, uh, we should be all set. Uh, hopefully, your Mike and friends that have he said that you're by. Ooh. That's good. That could be interesting. Uh, anyways, uh, why don't you guys get some rest? You've been on the road all day. Uh, get some rest and you get out tomorrow, right? But it has been a long day today uh, with your journey in, so it is getting kind of late. Uh, that might be a good idea. <laughs> Here's to this hopefully being our last uh, night, day, here in Thunderdark. So it's, I mean, I know we've spoken before about our plans, but, well, it's going to be kind of weird not traveling together. Yeah. I oh, even miss Lassiter's bouts of stone violence against random things. <laughs> Somewhat, at least. Things look like they might attack. You should probably throw something at them first. Make sure. But you'll make more friends with less stones, Lassiter. Less. I'd rather be safe and intact than lose a couple of friends or possible friends if they get mad at a simple rock then they probably wasn't going to be a good friend anyway back in back in the storm my days and service we would uh toss rocks at each other just to say hi to, uh to each other it was simple and effective we got the message and we went about our day <laughs> You surface dwellers are weird. Well, we never threw rocks at each other back home. But... <laughs> well, I will. I will. I am looking forward to getting back home and 
Well, getting back on the trail to finding my father and checking in on mother. I mean, we have been here a while. She must be worried sick about me. When the 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 first time we get up in the surface and you have some random guy throw a rock at me, I'm quitting. <laughs> Oh, to get back to the uh, tavern. Pappy's there. Hey, you're back. Correct. Oh, what's that? Oh, oh, yeah. No more. Do it. Fine. He's well trained. He's a new addition to the family. You've only uh, had him for a few days. Family? We were gone for a month. Oh, really? What the hell are you talking like, we were gone for a month? I'd say that was in character. Uh, uh, uh Tappy's like behind the bar, just on a, uh, uh, actually, the bar is at Gnomish Heights. Because normally this is a Gnomish city, so. It, He's just standing right behind the bar like normal. So you guys will usually tower above the bar. Um, and uh, Ember comes up to the bar and just kind of like climbs up and looks. Just like. <laughs> and she goes, ah, ah. Good. He's okay. He's okay. His name? His name is Ember. <laughs> Good Ember and Ember just kind of like nuzzles in, into her. And, oh, he's actually kind of sweet. Aww. Oops, a lot. Doesn't he's not? It he doesn't do kind of scaly. Uh, some lizard thing. He he's a Drake. Drake Drake Drake, like dragon Drake dragon. Yes. Uh, he's not gonna like. Set the place on fire or anything, is he? No, he okay. he's trained. Hello. Any brains? Yeah. Just, just think of him as a guard dog, guard Drake. Might be able to help make sure the stove is hot. God, Drake. I mean, think of think of all the guests that he'll trap alone. Just I mean, a Drake down in the Underdark. He'll draw in business and keep it safe. I mean, if you could teach him tricks, maybe it could be a little bit of entertainment, but um, I'm not going to impose that on you or anything, but just a thought. Uh, you know, got to run a business here. <laughs> well, you already have a main attraction with Cross cooking. Oh my god, I have so missed him so much. Can't wait until this is all over and I can have him all to myself. Uh, platonically, this is like speaking, of course. I was getting awkward. <laughs> this is this is also a female. <laughs> Deep now. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a while. The last one would probably be um, doing that eye wink thing um, towards Karad. When she's saying all that. You know what? It, it doesn't say, so I'm just gonna stick with shit. Happy seems to be a female. Brad ignores Lassiter. As you usually do. Yuck. Even though you had Karad during this journey, uh, serving up some. Mighty tasty meals. Uh, the meal at the because of the facilities and the ingredients that are available at the foamy mug. The dinner that you have uh, tonight is the best that you've had in a while, at least a month. In fact, Crad, if you want to make dinner, go ahead and roll me a, a, another cooking utensils check. Using decks, or. Uh, I'll say 
Uh, yeah, it, we'll, we'll go with Dex on it. It was either going to be Dex or Wisdom, and they're like, no, Wisdom's not going to work on this one. <laughs> you know what? Just in case. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes! Ah. <laughs> it is a glorious feast for the returning heroes. And uh, you all are able to, unless there's anything else you want to do b before the night is over. You're ready for your next adventure? Um. Uh. Excuse me. Brad would uh, try to find stuff to make a bed in his room for Ember. Like yeah, a sleeping pad for him. Uh, I will say uh, Tappy has, has quickly grown uh, on Ember. Um, and uh, Ember has grown and, on Tapia? Uh, both. <laughs> yes. Ta Tappy and Ember uh, end up uh, uh, getting along quite well. Uh, and Tappy is like, oh, might need a bed for him. Hold on. And she runs out of the tavern, and about uh, a half an hour later, she comes back with uh, just, like, a bunch of pillows and and uh, uh, a blanket, uh, which looks to be made of some sort of um, strange material. Uh, the material's nice and, and, and soft, uh, can easily like throw it over or throw it over him and but uh he said oh yeah so uh we did find a fireproof uh blanket just in case not saying it's gonna happen but just in case there's a nice blanket and some pillows here uh we can easily get this set up i'm assuming he's gonna sleep in your room yeah um you're such a good kid. And they just have this whole, whole like, like, you're such a good boy. And he's like, <laughs> and she's like, oh, yeah, I love, I love you too. Uh, so he um, gets, a, gets a nice bed. Mm -hmm. Lassiter? Um, Lassiter would probably just drink and, uh, have a good time with whomever is down in the tavern. Uh, it's pretty slow at the moment, so it's just pretty much the party. Bront, Prince Darendel. Uh, and of course, and Nightcap or Bront, if possible. <laughs> That's what he said. Uh, everybody gets a nice uh, rest and ready for the day. Uh, Karad, you wake up to a uh, Drake who's currently laying on his back. Let's see. And in pure bliss. I am in pure bliss right now. Oh, that's cute. Okay. He really enjoys his bed. And what would you like to accomplish for the day? Well. Uh, for, for Syrah, I guess he would, before going up to the surface, just getting some last minute information on the ooze situation, seeing what's been going on, if it's gotten better or worse. Don't we need he to just wants to make sure. Just wants to make sure things are calm before she leaves. Yeah. Well, don't, uh, don't we still need to go see stool? That's true. Yeah. Uh, Lasser will have a day cap with Ron, and then drink, and <laughs> then this beer. Yeah. <laughs> and then I will uh, 
alcoholism. You know, uh, um, I guess when we are set to go uh, look for stool and whomever, then, yeah. Uh, so you do know uh, Dorbo had, or I'm sure we've been communicating at least, uh, Dorbo had mentioned that the uh, ooze incursions from the, what they're nicknaming to be the Pudding Court, uh, is has gotten worse. Uh, yeah. It's not utterly terrible, uh, but it it has been, more oozes have been creeping out of the area into the general populace. Uh, they're, it's being taken care of by the guards fairly well, but it has been murder on their weapon. Um, so maybe we don't have that fun guy yet. That's what we're going to just go uh, for. Little, um, what do y'all want us to do about that? Uh, should we, should we like keep someone here to help out so i'll i'll volunteer if I mean, the gu else. guards pretty much have have declared that they could take care of it it's just the frequency of the incursions have been it's been more frequent but it's still manageable comment <laughs> bless you all uh Thanks. I'll put your religion on me. <laughs> All right. So you guys are uh, heading off to meet up with Stool. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. Back to the big map. Back to the map again. So, it's just about uh, a couple days journey towards the east was the instructions. Uh, so you head off in that direction. And he did mention that there was some sort of waystone that would mark the way. I would like... I would like everybody in the group to roll me either an investigation check or wisdom or or, or survival check. Investigation, since I have advantage on that. Literally both the exact same. <laughs> um were we all doing investigation? Can nice. everybody either roll me investigation or survival, one or the other. Whichever's better for you. Obviously, anything that's not wisdom, crowd's gonna do. But he also has the... Stone speaker crystal, which gives them an advantage on investigation. Andrew, it didn't really help much. <laughs> no. All right. After a day of searching, uh, you were unable to find anything. Um. So. You're not exactly sure if you're in the right place. Anything you'd like to do in the day? While you're searching? Sarah's a 26 then. It was a group. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, well, um, I'll guess I'll cast sending again, like maybe get a new uh distance from where we are now um to help him out 
Um, just because of... I know, cracked. Uh, Laster can have some troubles and stuff. I am going to place a hand... Uh, I, no, what? Distance cast. I don't want to touch him. A distance cast. Enhanced ability. Giving him Fox's cunning. So for the next hour, he has advantage on intelligence tech. I'm not dirty. Like, why? Why can't you touch me? <laughs> I don't wanna. <laughs> okay. Because with distance, it's necessarily with distance. about dirt. Because yeah. with distance <laughs> casting, if it's a touch spell, it has a range of thirty feet. Yeah. Yay, meta magic. Okay. Um. Uh, you, you get a response from Stool and says, well, we have something near the way marker. Uh, uh, maybe we can, uh, we'll see what we can do. Uh, maybe if we do a special. God damn it, Stool. Um, <laughs> they said Judgment someone was near the way marker thingy. Uh, are are we are we anywhere next to the way marker? No, you didn't find anything. You're just oh. kind of wandering through some tunnels. You, you know, you think you're in the right general area. You just haven't found anything that might be considered some sort of like way marker or something to help you in the direction. We don't have anyone with us, like a scout or whatever. I'm just using something. player character roles. Wow. Uh, Sorry. Maybe we should go and get someone that knows. Also, the your NPC C players are like five lower levels below you, so they're not much more help. Yeah, so maybe we should go get someone that knows the area. Or like. We keep looking. Okay, let's keep on looking. Yeah, you're a couple of days journey from Lingdenstone at this point in time. Oh, okay. All right. So you camp down for the night. Wake up the next morning and uh, continue searching. Uh, I need another... Uh, before we actually do anything, does anybody want to do any buffs? Um. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to preface this before we do anything. I have no relative buffs to give to anybody, so. Other than, like, detecting magic, if that would do anything at all. <laughs> so, Lester, your wisdom is better than your intelligence? Yeah. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and do enhance. I, I will say that, I will say this, Syrah and Lester are the ones that passed. Okay. Also, Gage is really bad at both of these checks. Which, which stat is better for him? Uh, wisdom in this case. Okay. His I'll go ahead. His dumb stats. I'll go ahead and give him advantage on wisdom checks. Al's wisdom. I. Yeah. I'll bless everyone. Um, how many people, uh, what does it say? Well, uh, guidance would work for, for skill checks, not bless. Yeah, bless helps with saving throws and attack rolls. Fuck. Never mind. I'm not gonna do anything. Don't you have guidance? Oh. Yeah, but I can only do one person. Yeah, but you can still do it. Well, do it to... Gage, or, uh, do it to, well, Gage has advantage. Do it to Holly, because hers is just a straight up roll right now. So adding a d4 is it would help her out. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, um, Holly can get a guidance. Oh, all right. All right. So survival and or investigation. I'm just... Bow, 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 bow. Still was, uh, survival. Whoa. 
this. It just didn't cross over. For... And added the four. Gym jar. Well, yeah, it's just... 17, 4, Holly. Because it's a D4, right? Mm. Yeah. Oh, oh, wait, let me... Pretty sure that's... Oh. Yeah, D4. Exact same. <laughs> but Trad credit. Trad did crit. Automatic group success. Was that three passes, two fails? Two failed. We're gonna have to haze them. Good luck with that. <laughs> They're deep. It's our damage dealer. The big damage dealers. I, I can. I can run an attack. Maybe. You think you can? Can you run fast <laughs> enough, though? I can Holy teleport. Thing. I can cut through. Oh. <laughs> I have. Just remember, God. I can teleport. <laughs> I have God on my side, though. You want to test that? Bahame, I need you. They're chasing me. <laughs> I didn't do anything. They're just running after me for no reason. Stop no making people mad at you. I don't mean to, I promise. So, you're walking around looking for, uh, for, uh, this, any, any sort of indication of this, of this way marker. Uh, when you see, uh, a flock of a group of lizards, like, suddenly come around the corner of a cave, they spot you. And they kind of like circle around and they like go off in a specific direction. What we recognize kind of lizard there? Uh, they, if you don't follow them, one of them actually peeks around the corner and just kind of stares at you. Guys, do you do you do you see what I see? Yeah, the lizards. Yeah, but that one's looking at us, looking at us like it wants us to go with him. Another one peeks around the corner. It starts Scooby Dooing. What's Scooby Dooing? Is it that pointing We're... thing? 
running. You, you know how in no, you know how in Scooby Doo where 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 people like peek around the corner and then two heads appear above oh. it to peek around the corner. Oh. I thought it was like that running in place, kind of like getting heads out. <laughs> no, that's like Fred. Fred Flint, that's Flintstoning. Um. Did all that can we, we sense, can we sense any malice coming from them or something? Roll me an insight check. Inside. No, oh, they don't seem malice. Um, it almost looks like they're like waiting for something from you. Yes, we should. Another one pops its head around the corner. So I was gonna step forward and look well. Let's see where this leads. And she'll start falling. Uh yeah. seeing you come come towards them, they like pop up and disappear around the corner again. Let's go. You turn the corner and you see one of them staring back. And then rushes off down down one of the corners. Keep following. Yeah, I'll keep. Yeah, I'm yeah. keeping. I'm keeping. I'm keeping uh, pace. All right. Uh, at, as the one leaves, uh, he runs into another one who joins him, and then you just kind of get this path. It's like almost like they're like living breadcrumbs. As you run into one, it runs ahead to the next one, who then joins in and. And that group joins with another one, and then the entire pack that you saw kind of come around the corner, look at you, then like turn around, uh, ends up grouping up, and you, it, and then they stop at one corner, which leads into a larger cavern, where you see a Mykonid standing by a a how is this. A small period a pyramid of carefully stacked stones next to him, to the mouth of an otherwise unassuming channel. I was starting to... This looks uh, like some sort of way marker. I was starting to get nervous. I was about to shoot off an Eldritch Blast at one of the lizards. What is <laughs> with you and killing things? Lizards it's, it's, go up it, and, and kind of surround the mic and... And the Mykonid turns around, and uh, uh, you don't quite recognize it. And all you can tell is that he gets really excited and starts jumping up and down. And then all of a sudden, a poof of spores go shooting out, which for some reason you have, you instinctively inhale. You yeah, have no choice. Everybody! And he comes running up to Zyra and just jumps on. It's still shorter than you. That first part got uh, cut out, I guess, get for noise cancellation. Oh, okay. He was just <laughs> screaming up the word everybody. Yeah, I think we understood what was happening. <laughs> Mina-san! <laughs> um, uh, and Crad, oh. did you bring Ember with you, or did you leave him behind? Yes, no, he, he's with me. He's still too young, I'm not leaving him behind. Uh, 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 the stool turns around and he goes, Whoa! Uh, uh, and then he goes, and, and turns into a, a large lizard, lizard like creature. Not that close to a drake at all. <laughs> but, uh, he's trying. <laughs> and he goes, Rawr. And then, and Ember's like, Seeing that, it's it's starts, starts <laughs> sorry, seeing that, it's like, do you want to be an even bigger, bigger lizard? <laughs> they both look up at you. <laughs> She's waiting for Stool to say yes or no. Uh, uh, stool uh, 
uh, wild shapes back <laughs> into his normal form. No, it's fine. I just wanted to say hi, that's all. He's cute. Oh darn. <laughs> Produce a bigger rock? No, become a bizar- bigger lizard. Oh. I mean... I was going to polymorph him. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, he he wild shaped into something that was like a little bit smaller than Ember, and Ember's not that big. I mean, two, three feet long. Doesn't you know? someone know the spell in large? Yes, I, mean, I think somebody does. Uh, I believe his name is Krat. He's I'll be coming um, towards you at some point with a favor. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I don't think you will like us to the request, but you can early on. I mean, there won't be any harm done to him. <laughs> Just Ron. Uh, or you. Ron. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. <Okay>. Size queen. <laughs> so, yes, Stool greets you and says... Yeah, we thought this wave market might be a good place to meet people because, uh, well, it's kind of distinctive. I mean, it's kind of weird that there's this, like, specific stack of stones. We don't know why it's here, but it's there. Uh, we did run into another one at one point in time, uh, but, uh, you know, I don't even know why these wave markers are around here. Uh, but we, we did set up a new grove. It's doing great. And Stool is, like, taller. Like, he would he's not quite adult Mike in size probably more of like he just hit puberty puberty group <laughs> what have you been eating uh stool you've Mushroom. you've gotten bigger I think uh well you know I, I uh we we haven't seen each other for quite a while so this does he normal. have Normal growth for a Mykonid. Does he have any, like, what would be, like, facial hair? Like, little shrimps? <laughs> little shrimps, no. He, he he literally just looks like a taller stool. As his balls I mean, drop. but he's also like a <laughs> Mike. <laughs> like, does his voice, is his voice I, I don't think you understand how Mykonid work. <laughs> No. Has he reached... <laughs> has he spored <laughs> lately? <laughs> has he spored recently? Yes, he did. Into your noses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. They're called remorse anyway. spores. Onward. Anyways, I did see you saw my animal friends here. Uh, I'm glad they were able to find you. Uh, apparently, this is a place where people get lost, which is also kind of one of the reasons why why we kind of like set this up, make it a little bit hidden, uh, especially considering all the good people in Neverlight Grove. Uh, we call it Daylight Grove, even though there's no real daylight, but we thought it would be kind of appropriate. Um, considering. Ah, come, follow me. Then he starts leading you down one of the caverns. Caverns. And eventually you make it into another cavern, which is very strange and different. It's very large, and you can see mushrooms, pools, and it's just like a magical mushroom kingdom. There are no pipes. But are there Koopas? Anybody understand? Okay. Of course I do. Koopas. Uh, it is full of mushroom people. Um, and one of the features is there seems to be this beam of it's several spots where these beams of light shine down onto the cavern floor. Can you see where they're coming from? Way up in the ceiling are some large holes in the ceiling where these beams of light are coming through. Uh, these don't last all, all the time. They seem to disappear 
uh, every night. But uh, we thought it would be pretty cool. Do they do they do they shift positions? Uh, yeah, they do shift a little bit. I mean, not much, but uh, somebody did notice that it, they shift. But they like at some point in the day, and they they like it's like they're really like a soft glow, and then it goes to a nice bright glow. You came around that time. Anyway, so so we've heard heard about things like daylight. So is that why we call it daylight crow? Like the opposite of never like her. I mean, especially for people from the surface. Yeah, and it's amazing this place because you see like really tall, tall uh, fungi. It's it is a veritable magical uh, forest. Uh, he leads you further into the the cavern. Uh, where you see some spots set up and uh, what looks to be a uh, essentially a meeting place for for the Myconids and you see Basidia in amongst the amongst the gathered few um, refugees from the former from Neverlight Grove. Basidia, I found them. They're here. And Basidia says, Ah, welcome to Daylight Grove. Oh, we were fortunate to find this nearby Blindenstone soon after we left you. I'm so, I'm so... been your adventures? Uh, we've been very busy and at times lucky to come out alive, but... I mean... I'm just still so impressed with this place. I'm amazed we missed it on our way here the first time. Well, this cavern was not like this when we arrived. Um, and we, like, when before it was just the pools, uh, we grew this forest. It grew quite quickly. I'm not exactly sure why. Maybe the beams of light. Any ideas what's causing it, though? We haven't really searched. We thought it was just a benefit of being, being here. Uh, no bioluminescent uh, fungi actually grow here. So it does get, get quite dark. But uh, we've been able to transplant some to, to at least have a soft glow. And, well, the beams go away. Interesting. Uh, but I understand that you well, were requiring something from your deep gnome friends. He'll look towards Karad. Or she'll look, she'll look towards Karad. Yeah, um... Karad would remember this, but Dustin does not. Uh, we're looking for a specific fungus to help with uh, prevent corroding from oozes. On weapon. Uh, I'll give a slight recon. You were given a list. <laughs> there we go. I'll pull out the list. Pull out the list, and and uh, uh, she can't actually read it, but uh, you read it off to her. She understands, and uh, she speaks something to uh, the other Myconids, and you see a bunch of them, them rush off. And uh, what looks to be, they start harvesting from what would be, you might consider, the fields. Uh, of the this mushroom forest. And uh, understanding the, the current situation says, well, uh, I don't suppose you brought a cart or anything. Uh, yes. By this description and what, what you have here. Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> I always have that on me. Here we are. Um, okay. it's like I can make a tensor floating disc you, too, if that yeah. helps. Um, 
Well, it was a 500 uh, it might pound. help a little bit. Uh, I can put 500 pounds worth of stuff in the bag of holding, and I have 25, so actually 475 pounds right now, because I have 25 pounds worth of stuff in there. Math, math, math. Hmm. Problem with tensors floating discs that only last for an hour. Yeah, but it's a ritual cast too, so I can just keep ritualing it. By the tip before, like ten minutes before the thing, he can cast it again. Just keep it up. Um. <laughs> uh, I to make this even easier. Um. We, we can definitely fill up your your bag of holding there, uh, but uh, let me have some some of our hunters come with you. Uh, we can help carry the load. Uh, maybe see if, see if there's anything else we can do do to assist. Assist. Uh, also, um, one of our explorers uh, has been doing ex some exploring around here. Has noticed some. Some ruins that have been nearby. Um, uh, we assume that they must be some sort of something in relation to uh, the deep gnomes um, that might have been considered as lost. Uh, the way marker that Stool met you at um, uh, led led the way to another one, uh, and soon after is where after that second one is where we found these ruins. Um, it is quite possible. Um, since we do not understand the deep known architecture, that this may be a facility that might have, might be able to assist you. Uh, before, while we prepare everything, uh, would you like to investigate these to see if this might be valuable to the denizens of Plingdenso? Yes. And also, um, for each to see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, okay. eleven hours out of the day. I can, uh, give multiple people double the carrying capacity with enhanced ability. Oh. So. Like, Holly alone can c carry up to over about 500 pounds. So. And each spell slot after, th th um, from third up, I can give it to an additional person. So that's... Yeah, based, on, based on the quantities that you were given by... That, uh... That you were given, uh, from... Uh, the Diggermatics, uh... The hunter's help would be enough, then everybody just carrying, not entirely to their normal carrying capacity, they could easily uh, carry it back to, get everything okay. carried back to it. So you won't have to worry about, about taking care of that. But yeah, definitely want to go look at this place before we head out, because it could be Edmox Boon. More than likely is Edmox Boon. Uh, a few hours. Uh, so while they're gathering everything up, uh, do, uh, you're welcome to leave your bag of holding so they can fill that, or they can just get everything ready to fill it when you get back. In any case, uh, when the the explorer that found the cavern uh, leads you through uh, the stop a few times, I ne actually need everybody to roll me a stealth. Uh, with advantage, because Stool is coming along with you and actually, no. Stool is coming along with you and casting Pass Without Trace. So just flat roll plus 10. Unless you're... 23. And... <laughs> Jesus Christ. Knowing that we have to go invisible, right? I, I know we were being stealthy, right? I we're supposed to be stealthy. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go invisible. So pass without a trace and 
So 29. And visibility. Doesn't that just take away the the points of um rolling with advantage? No, because Pastor Lyle Trace adds plus ten. And plus Gage has disadvantage on stealth tracks and roll the one. Uh, but total of 13. <laughs> Which, See, uh, sorry, we got 23, we got a 24, we got a uh, 29, and a 32 from the stool. Um, stool so and Chad just three. don't exist anymore. Uh, Holly? With oh. Yeah, about that. With uh, Passport Without a Trace, um, it takes away the sounds that we make. But um, it lessens. Yeah. Um, and it, also kind of puts you into the shadows. So. Well, it still does it even when you're like surrounded by a crowd of people that can obviously see you. Um, Pass Without a Trace still can stay up. Um, but with invisibility, you, yeah, they you wouldn't have advantage be... on your roll. <laughs> yeah, it's two things, two separate things that they do. Yeah. Yeah, because you could still be like Gage and roll a one. <laughs> yeah. Roll two ones. You go to, go to uh, with advantage, so. Just ensuring you get get well high enough. Uh, group stealth check. Uh, with that, uh, thank God everybody rolled above a ten. Room. The we explorer really might, helped Gage out. The explorer might can add as uh, as he's going going through carefully moving through and and through. You kind of lose track of Duel. You don't know what happened to him. He just seemed to disappear. But you felt like he was still around as you all stayed within 30 feet of him. Which I think is the wording version of Pass Without Trace, but I don't like the wording version of Pass Without Trace. Talk about it. Um, and uh, uh, he points out to you uh, that there seems to be a place where there's a basilisk horn. He creeps... You creep, sneak past it, and you find a large cavern, uh, which seems to have a structure... structured... be structured... a, a structure that into it and it looks like some sort of ritual chamber uh, you see some scribbling on, on some of the walls uh, in Undercommon uh, you do are able to make out the word and marks well it looks like we've, we, we found it finally Definitely going to, on our way, so knowing that we found this, I'm going to start carving, like, in the, like, on the way back, start making a, kind of like a trail, leaving a mark on the stones to that area. Like a glyph of some sorts that I know, like like I, that's easy for me. That would be like people kind of like innocuous to it, but can, I can give to the people of Blinden Stone, like, hey, follow this root, this glyph, and it'll send you straight to Edema Spoon. So you just quickly do that and leave immediately. Uh, no, I'm gonna check out the place, and I'll spend some time. Roll me an investigation check. Maybe I'll do that. Else who wants to? Yep. Uh, 
Right. Lassiter and Syra. So, 15 for me. Oh, no, that's a religion check. Uh, Syra, you do notice some uh, shattered bits of statuary. Uh, and they look actually like they're petrified bits of cave vermin. It looks like evidence of the basilisk has, uh, has been passing by here. I'm sorry, did I hear Basklis? Yes. Hmm. We plan on avoiding them, right? Unless you want to be, unless you want to join our our rodent friends here. That sounds like a horrible idea. Um. So yeah, let's go in the opposite opposite direction, maybe. You also notice that there's only one prince. Fuck. Well, do well, we as have long to we... go to the room? Well, it's the way we came in. Oh. Okay. Look out for Basilis. Well, if there was a Basilis, we would have already ran into it. Oh. It's kind of the whole thing. There's only one entrance to this area where there was evidence of a Basilis. The, air, the entrance we came in. Okay. As Brad is saying this, you hear a hissing sound coming from the entrance. Oh. And... She's going to... Uh, Sarah's going to... kind of duck behind whatever she can and shut her eyes and try to hide behind it. Gonna hide my eyes behind my shoe. Gonna but like move over to the side, close my eyes. I'm still invisible. And I'll tell Ember to do the same. Just so I have the usage done. So Ember, Ember, like moves to your relative location. It, can, it seems he can actually sense where you are, and kind of hides behind and just kind of like looks at you. I. And if you told him to close his eyes, he just like crunches his eyes. Oh, yeah, I imagine, um, could I possibly shoot spells at the Basilisk if, um, if I keep my eyes behind, eyes? behind, keep my eyes behind my shield and, like, peek, peek under it or over it, um, depending on uh, my... My objective w would be to be able to see her, but block my sight from her eyes. Like oh, I'm sorry. To see, to see the body, but not the eyes. Yeah. Uh, it would it, it would be just as if anybody else was like shutting their eyes or averting their eyes. Okay, it would be it. Okay. I just uh, don't want to be having closing my eyes. With that, we're going to pick this up next week with the fight and some mess. Woo! So it's going to be next week? Yeah. Hey. Do it next week because it's about that time. <laughs> yeah, okay. I was I was going to um, ask since y'all, um, since we're going to be disbanding this. Thing, why don't we try to play every week and um well, that would help 
and hopefully they we're, we're just gonna it. do it as we can but also the right, we... i'm gonna actually stop the stream good night everybody